back in the before times, long, long ago, before everybody used JSON and YAML, there were other file formats, cryptic, strange things, things where fields were separated with commas. When we encountered these, how do we parse them in a modern language like C sharp? Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at comma-separated values um, and see how to pause those and deal with them. Um, so, I mean, this is a off my screen, Dave. This is a super popular file format even these days. Uh, so there must be some way of pausing them out there. Uh, and I know that any time I run into it, I'm immediately tempted to be like, huh, this is just values separated by commas. I can pause this with a link statement and split. But it's not actually that easy. There are some corner cases in there uh, that make it a little bit trickier. So things like what happens if you have a comma in the field and what happens if you have quotes or double quotes and things get more and more complicated uh, as we kind of delve down into this. So I'm going to show you. Because it does seem super simple and like you could just you know, do a string split on a comma and you're done. But yeah, that's just not the case, unfortunately. It does. So I'm going to start off here with a brand new project here. Um, I'm not as cool as Dave, so mine is still old.net core. Uh, so let's get this going here. So I'm just going to start with a new file here called simple.csv, which is going to be a comma separated value list. Uh, and I have an extension here in code for doing comma separated values, or at least doing some syntax highlighting on it. So mine ends up looking a little bit like this. Uh, and I don't know what the extension is for it. Uh, Rainbow CSV is what it's called. Uh, so that's a handy little tool to make things look pretty and it's if you add more columns. Well, it gets its own unique color. Yeah, how many colors it, you get to be one set of colors here. Uh, but then I'm going to try and pause this and I am using a library for this called CSV helper. Uh, so this is a Pretty good little library. It's been around for years. Uh, I have used it on a number of different projects. I've never had any significant problems with it. Uh, so I would recommend it. Um, and in order to get it, we can just go and do a little uh, dot package CSV. Uh, let's store that in the project. Um, so the simplest sort of way of using it here is just to, to suck it in. So I'm going to just do using the helper. And uh, I'm going to read this stuff from a file. So I'm just going to use a file stream for that. Um, and this likes to have a culture to it. And everybody needs a little bit of link. Okay, and so to read this, we're just going to start off with a standard file reader. I'm going to take arg0 for that. Uh, the first argument off of here, and I'm going to use instead of use ring. Uh, and then we get into the, the actual CSV stuff, so let's CSV. And then this is where I throw in a culture here, so. Um, and so what this is going to do is it's going to read the file in for me. So what I want to do ideally is to have this thing provide me um, a piece of structured data. Uh, probably going to be a class, so let's create a class here. And as with all good demos, it contains a person object here. Uh, so I have 
an ID, a name, and an age. All pretty simple. Like and ID. And just as we did with, with like Newton soft, um, we'll just do something like CSV dot get the type person, uh, and then that's enough. So we'll just assign a collect that, uh, and then we'll just print that out. We'll Right lint there. Linting would have caught that problem. All right, so we're just going to read this in and away we go. And again, this seems really simple here. So let's just do a dot net run. And it already feels like, oh, I could have just done this. Fine, index results. Oh, I forgot to. There we go. So it's gone and read that first record for me. Um, but it still feels like, oh, this is really easy. But what if we would come over here and we had something like uh, our friend Darcy, who is a walking, talking SQL injection attack? Uh, so this will handle that correctly. So it handles single quotes nicely without any problems. Uh, but CSV also supports things like this, where the term crosses lines. So this looks really strange. So the, there is a standard for CSV. It's RFC, what is it, uh, 4180. Um, so the standard defines this as being A-OK. -okay. Every line is supposed to end with Windows line endings. So character turn and line feed as opposed to just which one is it? Line feed or character return? It's the other one. Uh, line feed. Yeah. Uh, so the CSV parser handles this one. So if we run this again, it should pick it up here. So now it's correctly imported it and interpreted that as being across two lines. Uh, and then the other fun bits you can have here is you can have double quotes inside of this. So Double quotes is the way you escape a single double quote. I guess it's like double double quotes. Because this is technically a double quote character. Uh, so it's gone nicely and imported that for you too. So this is just like the simplest way that you can load things from a CSV file. Uh, there's lots of added little things that you can do with this. So just like you would get with Newtonsoft, you can annotate columns with different names here. So we could say if the, the name of the file here was identity, like we will now load from a column called oh, did name attribute could not be found. Uh, it must be in here. Let's go check the documentation. It's not called name. Uh, ah, you're using on those attributes. Yeah, there must be must be that namespace. Uh, I really wish people in the demonstrations would put namespaces in. Mm. Let's go take a look at a great example here. Um, Reading under configuration. Yeah, maybe class maps, um, attributes. Even in their example, they have failed to put in what the namespace is. Um, I don't suppose this is going to do completion for me. I'm missing for that. CSV helper dot configuration dot attributes. Is it? Okay, so it is. Well, we actually don't know if it's correctly read it. Let's pull the 
ID up instead here. Okay, so it does pull that column name correctly. Um, so yeah, you can use attributes here or you can pass in a configuration for it to remap columns. Um, one place that I felt like it fell down for me uh, when I was doing this was that I wanted to be able to apply some transformations to the strings coming back. Uh, and that wasn't something that I was able to do um, in quite the way that I wanted to, but it wasn't a big deal. I worked around it in other ways. Um, so the, the particular problem that I was having with the CSV file that I had was that it wasn't standard compliant. So it had some incorrect character escapings within it. And I was hoping that I would just be able to be like, hey, as you are reading this one particular field, apply this transformation to fix the character encodings. Uh, but I ended up just doing it at like a full file level instead. You yeah, so that's... And then read the file in kind of the yeah. CSV helper. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, and cool. because it, it reads from a just a general stream, I was able to poke at the stream and then just rewind it or generate a new stream from it or something. I don't know exactly what I did. It was not too difficult, but yeah, this is a, a great little library. It's quick to read CSV files with it. Uh, and it also has the ability to write out CSV files, which I haven't really tried. Okay. Take a look at the demo and do that one live. Um, but I think you can just kind of write you can it give out. It a give it a bunch of class instances and just yeah uh, file. Uh, yeah so just csv dot write records so i guess we could we could try remapping it and uh csv writer okay so this just takes in a different stream and then we could write it out so we could read all that stuff in, manipulate it, write it out. We can try something like that. Yeah, you could read it in, fix Darcy's name, and then write it back out. We could do that. Let's give that a try here. All right, so let's go up here and do bar records. Then here, close that stream off, we'll write to another file, C here, uh, and then in here, we could just do like records, records, dot select, person, uh, and that's going to be basically the same thing, so it be easy to do it. Is the final column, I think. Everything else looks fine except for the Let's try it. List could not be found. This is another one of those places where we're like, we need that global includes. You know? Output file here, and indeed it yeah. has directly replaced that and Check. handled all of the uh, new lines and spacings and all of that. All right, so yeah, that's CSV helper in a nutshell. So
Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, and we will see everybody on the next episode. Bye. Bye.